Welcome to another episode of Racing to Learn. We are a nonprofit that uses radio control to get kids excited about math and science. We are working on our ECX Ruckus today, uh, the two-wheel drive. Uh, this one's been fully upgraded almost. Um, I shouldn't say fully, but we've got an assortment of upgrades on these. If you're curious about them, please look at the playlist that is listed in the, uh, the details of the video. And uh, today we are, we are going to go ahead and swap out the rear shocks um, for some aluminum ones. Now, I'm just looking here because um, to get at the rear shocks, we're going to, and the reason why we're doing this, I should remove this makeshift stand here. So if you look at the front suspension, right, these are full, these are rebuilt, refilled, cleaned. Uh, aluminum shocks here, the ECX upgrades, right? Look at just, you can see, see the compliance of the suspension there. It's doing its job. You move to the rear and it stays in the downward position when you push it down. So that is not what you want a suspension to do. The purpose of the suspension is to keep the tires in contact with the ground, right? So you can put the power down and have traction through the tires, um, with the ground so if the suspension stuck up it's going to bottom out here right um so you're going to damage the truck as well as it's it's just not going to be able to put that power from the wheels down to the ground which you want it to do so uh, let's see here what are we going to do how are we going to do this first i'm going to take off the rear body mount and we are Let's see here. How are we going to do this? So, what I'm trying to look at here is that the access to this nut is blocked by um, this, the body mounts. So, what is the best way to do this here? I could get a wrench or, you know, pliers, but those are going to mar the finish. Uh, let me see if I can get one of our wrenches in here. Because the ECX plastics are nice because they have a good amount of flex. Oh, look at that. So we could pop in a wrench to hold the back of that. And actually, you know what? I might even do this because these shocks were a little bit short on time here because we wanted to hit a BMX track with this truck. I'm going to try this. So, holding that nut while removing that screw. Um, I have to press down on the suspension a little bit because that, that screw is still embedded in the plastic there. So we will go ahead and and screw the screw all the way. But we're going to do a little trick here that um, I'm going to support the back of the truck here. Actually, the whole truck. I'm just going to put it on my makeshift stand. So, what we're going to do is probably the, the, um, the reason why the suspension is sagging is because it is low on oil. So what we're going to do is I'm going to take some tissue, clean off the shock here. Just make sure that no dirt gets into the fluid, but I'm going to do a little bit of a shortcut here. I'm going to see if I can crack this open uh, and it's turning. So let's see here. There's a little shortcut I figured out. It might just not be worth it. <laughs> I was thinking that, let's see if I can do this. I'm gonna pop the bottom of the shock, uh, get the spring retainer out there to give me some more room. Um, I'm gonna put, let me get some, Get pliers through the springs there. 
Um, let's see if I can hold it with my hand. I'm going to hold the hex part of the bottom of the shock. And uh, there we go. Oh, that unscrewed the bottom of the shock. Not what I wanted to do. Let me see if I can just hold the shock body. That's not working either. Ah, there we go. It's cracking open the top of the shock. Using the top of the, or the screw going through the, the shock eyelet on the cap there. For leverage. Oh, and it's got adequate fluid a little bit low. Let's try this. I'm just going to top off the shock. With some 35 weight associated fluid. It's kind of the generic. Top that off a little bit more. All right. And put that shock body, shock cap back on the body. Now this is purely being done for time's sake so we can make it out to the track. Uh, I'm going to tighten it using that screw and let's see here. That is a lot better. So when you have, when you're short on shock fluid or when you're, when you have shocks that are low on shock fluid there. Um, what happens is that air gets introduced into the system and then your suspension doesn't perform as it should. And I'm going to move this in. Let's see if the inner shock hole works here. Okay, actually that's what was being used on one side but not the other. Interesting. Um, the shocks were not evenly mounted there. This shock was mounted on the middle hole, and the uh, right side there was mounted on the um, inside hole. <laughs> All right, so let's get this screwed in. I'm just going to screw this into the plastic until I see the tip of that. Tip of that screw pop out of the other side here. And then I'm going to thread on the bolt. Oh, I need to get more of that screw to get some bite on the bolt. Where'd my, where did that bolt go? Here we go. Oh, it was great working on our Proline pit mat here to catch those loose screws and bolts. Okay, I'm gonna thread that on. Probably not doing the best job of showing it on the camera here, but it's hard to see. So, again, you can flex this body mount out of the way here. Oh. I just want to make sure to thread it on my hand. I don't want to use the, the driver to do that. Or else it might cross thread the, the screw and the bolt there. Don't want to do that. All right, so I've got the nut captured with the driver there. Now I'm going to go ahead and use And I don't want to over tighten this or else it's going to crush that pivot ball here, that plastic pivot ball. She when I had this shock out, I can I noticed that it was already dented there. All right, much better. Look at that. So we will save the plastic or we will save the aluminum upgraded shocks for another day there. So Again, you can tell the difference here with the, the other side of the suspension. Oops, there goes my driver. Um, we're going to go ahead and do the same thing here to the other side. And also, um, just 
give the, the suspension a quick once over. Yeah, you could see here that um, this the shock eyelet was completely tightened down. There's no there's no ability for that plastic ball to pivot here. So let's go ahead and rotate this. really clean up our workbench here but it's been busy so put the uh, driver on the back there hold the nut the screw that is just so that we can use it as leverage to pop open the shock cap so what I'm doing here is I'm just pressing down the spring a little bit getting a good grasp on that plastic shock body and hopefully we can untighten this ah, there we go takes a little bit of muscle to open this up to crack the seal but uh, let's see where the shock fluid is on this one. Oh, so we got a little more on this shock, but definitely it is low. So top this one off as well. And, you know, quick visual inspection of this shock fluid too. It's pretty clean still. You know, there's no gunk in it. So these, you know, the, again, this RC, you could look at the bottom of the shock cap too, right? This RC was in pretty new condition, surprisingly new actually. So kudos to the previous owner. And uh, this was really a find off of eBay, a rare find, practically new. All right, so we'll just tighten that down. And we didn't even have to pop out the bottom, um, the, the, um, the, the, uh, it's escaping me right now. The, uh, <laughs> bottom of the, um, uh, spring retainer, I should say, the spring retainer. All right, so again, we're going to use the inner shock mount hole just to give us a little more suspension travel. Line up the screw here, start threading it in by hand. And then use the driver. So we're going to screw the screw in just so that we get a little bit of the tip poking through the other side of that plastic shock tower. And then we're going to go ahead and grab our nut. From our wrench, thread that on by hand. All right, and then put the nut driver on it. Okay. And I don't want to crush that suspension ball that's in the shock cap there. So it still has some wiggle in there just so that the suspension is binding much better. So I can even put the back of this truck down here and you can see the difference when I compress. Oh, it's still sticking a little bit. It's better. And... Huh. So the fluid was low, but yeah, it's not bottoming out, which is good, like it was before. It might just need some st some stiffer springs. So yeah, let me just put the camera under the truck so you can see the rear of it. So it's not bottoming out all the way. 
but I would really prefer that the truck come up a little bit higher so that you can see that I can lift it up a little bit more even after the suspension settles. And that's that's a fair amount more. That's probably about you know a centimeter or so that um that suspension is not returning. And yeah, these these springs were pretty soft actually. Um I think the same springs are on our our upgraded uh, aluminum versions, but maybe there's just higher pressure within the uh, the aluminum shock bodies because this yeah this seat feels a lot stiffer than this did. So uh, you know we could always put some more sh spacers here. Um, actually, that's a good observation too. Um, yeah, we are compressing that spring a little bit more on these uh, upgraded aluminum ones, just comparing the, the height there. So, uh, we'll grab some more shock spacers. Maybe we'll even have some over here. Let's take a look in our box of ruckus parts. Um... Yeah, this, this will probably make up the difference there. So let's pop these in. And put one on the other side here. Let's see here. Yeah, a little bit better, but we'll see how this handles. Yeah, probably just need to use a stiffer spring. You can see the springs are kind of binding on that shock tower too, a little bit. It could be, I'm, I'm rotating the spring here to just see if it's concentric and it doesn't look like it is. <laughs> there we go, the, the spring itself is um, bent out a little bit. So that's what's causing it to catch on that shock body. Let's see if, it's better on the right hand side, but yeah, it looks like we've got some deformed springs here. Um, so in a future episode, we'll we'll go ahead and replace those with the aluminum ones, but um, we'll just go ahead and put on the body mounts back on. And actually, in the next episode, we're gonna go ahead and and fit a Proline C210 body on this for bashing purposes, just a lot sturdier than the stock Ruckus body. So thanks again for watching. Please like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time.